Plugin of the week comes from Kive Audio Nfuse. I've been waiting for somebody to uh, do an emulation of at least the uh, Fusion um, uh, processor from SSL. They've put all of the little tiny bits and parts into separate plugins, but never as a whole. Uh, and then we have another one that was a surprise, the Master Bus Transformer from uh, Rupert Neve Designs. So uh, two very similar processors in terms of their design and layout uh, and in hardware form designed to work with people who probably mostly work in the box but want to route their signal through something that gives them a nice analog feel. You get two different characteristics uh, you know, uh, from the Rupert Neve design, which would probably have a warmer, richer, low end and low mid and the SSL that might be a little bit more uh, pristine on the top, clearer on the top, and a bit more present in the mid-range. Now you got all of the options kind of built in here. And uh, so what we have with the plugin um, here, just kind of quickly going through preset, you could turn over sampling on or off. We got all of that. You can route, change the signal of uh, routing, right? Uh, what module goes into what. Um, we have a, a section here that allows you to change settings from the left and the right if you're in dual mono mode, right? So if we set this here, that would be mono mode. So left and right would be separate from each other. We could operate in stereo uh, or in MS, right? So we have that option. Um, you can also link the uh, parameters. Uh, so if I make an adjustment on anything, it will be the same for the left and right. But if I want to do them independent of each other, which probably would be the case in mid-side mode, um, then uh, you would have that option there. And then there is the NF mode link. So if I put this on, essentially what that does is it works with this button here, which allows me to change the whole display between the SSL Fusion and the Neve uh, Master Bus Transformer. So I can kind of go back and forth uh, between them. Uh, the gain link, uh, there's no documentation for it. I've gone through, I'm not sure if it links the gain uh, control on the compressor. Uh, it doesn't seem to link input or output gain and all of that stuff is uh, linked together uh, with the link left-right controls or link mid-side controls. Uh, undo, redo, AB, all of that sort of stuff. You could change your GUI size and all of that over here. Get some product info, a uh, little extra info here. Check to see if your plugin's up to date, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's go through it. So what we have is as we go through this, if I, I'll just kind of go through them uh, individually. Let's start with the master bus transformer here. We have an input gain control and then a high pass filter. On the uh, on the Neve or the Rupert Neve Designs version of this, I believe that the filter only goes up to like 200 hertz or something like that. It doesn't go up as high as 20k, but they have that extended. The other thing that the original unit has is that it has detented stepped positions for all of the changes. It just makes it recallable or easier to sort of get back, uh, uh, mark the settings that you have. Uh, for it. I think that's probably, you know, that would be a typical kind of mastering thing, but maybe just reproducibility is the factor in that. Also sound, that often sounds better. Here you get infinitely variable settings for all of the knobs with this, uh, on this Rupert and Eve version. So you have that. I couldn't find the order of filter on any of the documentation, including on the knee, uh, Rupert and Eve Designs website for the original hardware. Uh, we have a saturation section. Um, and there are two controls here. So there's dark, um, which would be uh, basically the low frequency of what they would call the silk section. And it's basically a low frequency pre-emphasis uh, for the saturation. And then the red is basically the same thing, only for high frequency saturation. There's a Zener drive in there, uh, which will give you kind of a soft clip kind of sound with the saturation. Uh, you could put this whole section in or out. Um, have an EQ section here. So we have two shelving EQs, which would be the same on both. And uh, and just a frequency range up to 240 here, down to 3K here, plus 9 dB, plus minus 9 dB a boost. Again, you got the out and in here. Uh, the compressor section, makeup gain in the middle, threshold all pretty straightforward. You have two ratio possibilities. High ratio is five to one, two to one is the low ratio. Um, you have a side chain filter, uh, that works in that so you can you know kind of limit the amount that low frequencies affect the triggering of the compression and you have a release control 
Okay, so no attack control, uh, attack control, excuse me, and and pretty much what you get here, uh, basically with the two different ratios, you're going to get kind of a you know obviously different characteristics on the attack just based on that setting there. So get a little bit of a fast slow kind of thing there a bit. Um, so we have that stereo imager. Uh, we have a width control. Now the way that these two operate is a little bit different. Um, uh, the width control. On the uh, on the me version actually widens uh, the mid range and high frequencies, and um, and uh, what you get is the high pass filter here, which controls what that cutoff point is. So basically, you can leave lower frequencies alone, and then sort of funnel out the width up to as you go up the frequency spectrum. Again, you could put it in and out, and then uh, we have the width control, which goes plus minus. So you're basically narrowing it or widening it. Right. All right. So pretty straightforward on that. Then output gain control just to sort of balance everything out and a master uh, bypass. There's also some gain reduction meters in here um, and uh, output meter over on that side. If we go over to now to the uh, fusion SSL fusion, same input gain uh, here. We do have a um, third order noise filter. So 18 dB per octave there. Um, the uh, saturation control, so the drive knob is a non, you know, it's all a non-linear saturation. It just sets the amount. Um, and the density here, when you set it to the lower settings, leans more even order, probably make it a little bit warmer sounding. Um, and the higher is odd, which give it a little bit more edge. So you've got some controls there. Uh, this is the violet uh, EQ. Right, so there are two shelving EQs, low frequency shelf, high frequency shelf, right? So you got the gain controls here, you got the frequency selection there. Again, pretty straightforward. Get a nice air out of this. That's one of the things that the Violet EQ is good for. Now this section is different. On the Fusion unit, there's a high frequency compressor, but they decided to add a sort of bus compressor style. You could see the two, four, and 10 ratios. Um, and then, you know, with the attack and release times, all characteristic of the SSL bus compressor. And uh, although this doesn't go up to 30, but whatever, that's okay. Um, threshold setting and uh, makeup gain. So again, all, all pretty straightforward on that. And that way, when you go back and forth between the two, um, you have um, the uh, Neve compressor, which actually I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm sorry. Uh, normally I look that up. It could be a VCA uh, compressor that they added in there, but... Um, you know, there's no other indication that it's like a diode bridge or anything like that. And, and then we have the imager here. Now, the imager here on the width control is basically um, changing the balance between the mid and the side signal. So that's kind of what you're doing there. So you're leaning more towards mid, leaning more towards the sides. Um, and then uh, the space control will boost or cut the base in the side channel. So if you uh, put this in, it will actually add low frequency content to the sides. Uh, and if you take it away, it'll take away low frequency content from the side. So that's often a technique that's used to sort of clean up a muddy mix. Um, and if there's some phase issues that, that might make it, um, you know, like not monoing it up may not give you the results or may create some phase distortions, um, just filtering it out from the sides would be the solution there. Okay. All right. So let's have a listen. Let's make some noise with this. Uh, let's see, where do we start? Let's start with the Neve. Now, as you go through um, here, uh, and this just sort of happened, this link turns off as soon as I switch off an individual section. So as I switch this here with the NF mode link in, it will allow me to go back and forth. But I can then take any individual section and flip it the other way, and then it turns that feature off, right, so that you don't end up losing what you had. Um, what's cool is that uh, because they're different things, if I set settings here, it doesn't carry them over to the other because they often do different things. In other words, they're um, they're not fully compatible. Uh, let's start. I'll leave the high pass filter alone. It just is what it is. Let's start with. Uh, let me turn off. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to begin? The order and signal chain here is EQ dynamics saturation so let's start in that order here let's start with the new eq try a little bit uh play around with this a little bit and see what we got <laughs> Thank you. 
no gain within this individual section. So I'll just kind of follow it. This is something to consider because if I move this after the dynamics, then uh, that would change the gain, uh, you know, um, your threshold setting, just a consideration here. And they have the saturation at the end. So let's just kind of see how that sounds. <laughs> trying to get the uh, kick in the snare, which primarily triggers that to be a little bit more even, so as it breathes, at least consistent. <laughs> Did that actually come in as like a, that should be uh, here, I think, to start off with. Yeah, that monoed it up right there. That's, I loaded up the default setting, so I'll have to uh, uh, sort of, well, it's, it's right there, so, okay. bass strong in there by putting the filter in to kind of make that monoed up. That's cool. <laughs> So that's that's actually pretty cool. Gets a nice depth out of there, uh, out of the width control. So sort of lifting that side energy usually will also lift a bit of ambient energy as well. So that's kind of a, a bit of what's going on there to kind of add some depth. Uh, but overall, just straight up, that actually sounds quite good. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, maybe I'll switch over to the B side here, put this back on, and let's switch to the Fusion. And then maybe we can do a quick A-B to see which one we like. Now, we can actually go back and forth globally. Uh, um, you know, in other words, this, uh, well, nope, this is not. Oh, no, because it, it's in there. In other words, I could go back here, I believe, uh, and switch it back to this, and it would maintain what I've done here. So let's just do it that way, and then we'll see which works best. All right, so let's start over again. Here we go. This is the uh, Fusion from SSL. Let's check this out. Oh, you know what? I didn't do saturation. Hold on one second. I apologize. Deeply apologize. All right, let's go. Oh, you know, this, this also didn't zero out here. So I had like a, a compromise right from the beginning. Terrible. All right, here we go. Maybe this is meant to be, and maybe it's just a graphic thing. 
Yeah, no, that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, so let's crank this up. Let's see what we got. that zener drive which is the soft clipper it's a bit cleaner a little less fuzzy on the top end so uh, let's roll with that and then uh, and then let's move over to the fusion channel but basically this is low end silk this is high end silk and in neve talk uh, now let's move on uh, over to the ssl same thing eq dynamic saturation will go in that order uh, let me take out all the other sections here so I remember to put them on. Let's start with the EQ. <laughs> sidechain filter here. That's what I was looking for. liking this as much as I as I want to. Maybe I need to go to a two to one. I'm normally a four to one guy. Big SSL bus compressor user. So maybe I need to maybe I need to slow down on the attack here. Maybe that's what <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, that that helps a lot. I think it was just the the faster attack was just not right for this, getting a little too gummed up. Uh, okay, good. Let's just check out the width control here and do an AB. This will add low frequency into the sides. This will take it away. Let's do a comparison now between the Neve and the SSL. can hear like you know i obviously i think that the neve serves this track far better right in terms of the richness of the low end but you could hear how like this is more focused on the mid-range also remember that we could take something in like if i just wanted to flip this to the compressor settings we had on the other side that would be available <laughs> So just the ability to kind of flip section by section allows you, kind of gives you the best of both worlds, where maybe you like the compressor setting on the SSL better than the Neve. I think the Neve, I, I would have picked that anyway, probably for this track. Um, but for something that has a bit more mid-range presence, that's maybe more of a rock grinder kind of thing, a punk thing or something like that, where that mid-range intensity is a little bit more necessary, um, the uh, SSL Fusion might be a better choice on that. A really cool one. This is a, this is a fun one. It kind of adds in two things uh, into the palette that uh, aren't out there on the market. I think they did a really great job emulating both of them. Uh, lots of great options here. I didn't even dig into the MS, and then obviously if you need to uh, change the, uh, you know, go to dual mono, you could get into the whole thing where you're rerouting um, the signal flow uh, so you can move things around. Um, really great setup. And I didn't even have the oversampling on. So this is with the oversampling off. Uh, and that, that will help to make some uh, significant improvements in the sound as well. So really nice job by Kive Audio. Um, uh, impressed. Uh, they have a few things that they've been coming out with that are kind of not the usual stuff that uh, you see emulated. And, uh, and I think that's great. So uh, uh, congrats to Kive Audio. Nice one. Enfuse. Check it out. Uh, it is the plugin of the week. <laughs> 